before, Splash but never and here. Probably. Yeah, yeah. In seedy hotels in, in Manhattan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we don't want you having any seedy hotels in Dallas, Texas, Tom. <laughs> oh, I don't think any exist. From what I've seen so far. Well, if they do, we don't talk about them. Anyway, it's good to see you and nice to welcome you on my own turf, as it were. I think it's good turf. Yeah, glad you think that. It's been quite a year for you. Money Pit did so well. I guess it's still doing well in, in certain places. Yes, yes, and probably shouldn't have uh, from some of the reviews I read, but it's just been a very pleasant surprise. So what, is, what does that tell you then? Uh, that if a movie has enough laughs in it, it'll do all right. I guess, excuse me. <coughs> Let's say that Sorry. again. Yeah, okay. I will. Uh, Let me give you the lead in. Okay. Thanks, thanks. So what does that tell you? That if you have enough laughs, the movie will do all right. Uh, that was, uh, and also that the, what the critics say doesn't mean all that much, I guess, in the final analysis. But, analysis, but I knew that anyway going into it, so that's, it, it didn't prove any new points to me. So you believed in it? Uh, as far as the money pit goes, yeah, I thought we made a good movie. I thought, I thought that it was funny, and I thought that it was a, a, a nice attempt at, uh, at, at that kind of film. We weren't making the Battleship Potemkin. We knew that going into it. But what we tried to do was to entertain an audience for about an hour and a half, and I think we did that. Nothing in Common is quite a different film. Nothing in Common is the Battleship Potemkin. No, no, no it's a, <laughs> that's a terrible joke. I don't mean that. Yeah, no, Nothing in Common is, is uh, uh, required, I think, from everybody going into it, a, a substantial amount of emotional uh, investment in the film, what, what we're talking about. Uh, is, uh, I guess, a different version of the American family, but I think a very accurate version of, of some American families. Uh, the relationships between, uh, between a father and a son and a father, uh, a father and, the, and the mother and the, and the mother and the son are all uh, very particular things. Uh, and in, in telling a story like this, uh, Gary Marshall and myself and the writers were, were almost uh, have a duty, I guess, to be as honest as possible in telling the story. So uh, going into a movie like this, we realized that we weren't just going to be able to show up and pal around every day and, and uh, turn on the, the motor every now and again and then see what we have. This one has a few chuckles, but it's not a comedy, and it's not supposed to be people sitting there, you know, laughing throughout the thing. So Although if they do that, that's fine. Yeah, there are. We were we were also trying to be genuinely amusing and and downright funny on a couple of couple of occasions. There's only two really cheap jokes in the whole thing, which is not a bad ratio. So did you purposely want them there because you said earlier now if you have enough laughs people will enjoy the movie? No, actually uh, <clears throat> in this case we, we needed a, a, a level of integrity uh, on both sides of the film and I think we do make a, a very grand uh, emotional swing one end uh, to the other in, in the course of the emotions of the movie. But in order for it to all balance out perfectly I think we had to be just as honest in in uh, eliciting laughter in the film as we were in eliciting emotion. The, we don't lampoon anybody in this movie. We, we instead go for, I think, the honest humor of the situation, in which case uh, setting it in, in the advertising industry, I think, it gave us a great head start. Just by itself, advertising is, is an amazingly mysterious and very unusual industry, one that makes billions of dollars. But we could not go off and attempt to make a film as quote-unquote serious about about a, a, a man's relationship with his parents and just, just throw in a bunch of really cheap, jokey caricatures or cartoons of people. We had to specifically aim at uh, a humor and wit that comes out of a very real place or as real a place as possible. Tom, does it worry you that people will go in with expectations, uh, Tom Hanks, and they'll think of Splash and Money Pit and the comedies you've done, and then see a more serious Tom Hanks? Does it worry you that maybe they won't like you as much? No. No, I, I think that uh, uh, they might not like the movie, uh, but, but that, that's a crapshoot all unto itself. Uh, as far as what we did, I was not worried about whether I would be able to do this at all. Uh, the battle here was really doing it well and doing it right. Uh, the, 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 the canvas that we had to paint here is very broad, there's no doubt about that. We had a long way to go from the beginning of the film to the final frame. Uh, but I was not intimidated by that distance. Instead, I was, in, I was really challenged. I was, I was ready to go. 
And I was surrounded by very good people who, who shared the same common vision of what the story was. Gleason, of course, ha does comedy and drama, and he's done some really heavy drama. Yes. Did, did the two of you ever discuss that, the fact that an actor can do both? Uh, I, I think Jackie's opinion of this were all very well chronicled, of which uh, I was both knowledgeable and I, I agree with. Uh, the nature of doing comedy requires uh, uh, a natural ability, one way or the other. Be it, you have to be funny, I think, in order to do it. You cannot take somebody who doesn't get the joke and have them tell the joke and have the joke work. As far as what uh, our, his approach to, uh, to doing, a, uh, I guess, uh, you know, drama uh, for, with a capital D, is the same gut instinct that he relies on to do something that is funny. And I've always considered myself very much a, an instinctual actor that requires a lot of discipline and a lot of people around him to tell him what works and what doesn't. But still, I, uh, I have always relied on that first gut reaction to whatever a, a, a character has to do or say. Uh, we never really talked about it because uh, one of the uncommon, uh, uh, unspoken rules is that you don't try to analyze it, you just get up and do it. Because as soon as you analyze it, you lose any spontaneity. Jackie certainly adheres to that, as do I. When we were working, the intimidation of working with Jackie was totally lost and the fear of working with Jackie gone. The awe of working with Jackie was instead replaced with just a real professional joy of the ensemble. And, uh, and I must say something of a professional honor just to be uh, standing on, in front of the same camera. Did you pal around together offset? Oh, no. No, not at all. So I, <laughs> he's not a, uh, Jackie would make his entrance, and he would make his exit, and that's the last we'd see of him. I was on location once with him, and I observed the very same thing, that he would come in, do the scene. When they were finished with him, off he went, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess stays pretty quiet. To uh, I think he saves it for the work. Uh, he saves it for when the camera is rolling and we're up in front of it and everything else just dilutes from that. He was never interested in, in any of, of the, the, oh, I don't know, the, the formalities of making movies or the, 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 the perks or, or the, 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 the surroundings. The Winnebago's. Uh, he was well. He had that. He had a huge one. Uh, <laughs> but he, rather than sit around and deal with the mechanics of making a movie, he just wanted to get up and make the movie. Let's do it. Well, let's just do it. That's fine. Let's do it. We don't need to talk about it. Let's do it. That's his approach to it, which I find very, very refreshing. Because more often than not, you find people that can just go on and on and on and on about what they want to try to do without actually having them get up and, and showing what they're going to do. Uh, that's very, th that is a very nice way to work, and I must say that it's funny, but uh, you wouldn't think that, <laughs> that that would be shared with somebody like Eva Marie Saint. Uh, but Eva, who I had the same intimidation and awe at the prospect of working with, uh, was much the same. Now granted, she, we would chat, we would, we would talk almost as mother and son uh, in much greater detail, but never about what we were doing, never about the scene, never about what we were going to try to do. Uh, once the camera was were rolling. Instead, when that time came, we just said, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. So it's, it's funny, but th that same sort of instinct carries over from, from a, a guy of, of Jackie's stature and with all of his legendary baggage that goes along, and also with Eva Marie. As far as uh, the relationship you have with your own parents and your own father, how would you describe that? There are similarities, just, but that's just in the, like, the chronological aspect of the movie. My father was, my parents divorced when I was very young. Uh, and I uh, have been, both my parents have re remarried any number of times. We moved around a lot. Uh, but I have a great amount of affection and, and closeness for both sets of parents. And myself and my brothers and sister are also very close. We never, ever viewed our family as being uh, a tragedy or, or a tough time or even any different. Instead, we, we thought these people who lived in homes, the same homes that they were born in, uh, and had parents who were still married, we thought they were the weird ones. So you, you just couldn't imagine that. But, uh, so it, it's, uh, it, it, it gave me, I think, <clears throat> uh, I think a real head start as far as understanding and being able, trying to communicate what David Basner is going through in this film simply because, yes, I guess I have lived a, a certain aspect of that. But it, it, it's, it's only from like a, a reactionary point of view, not a, not a philosophical point of view at all. 
And in your case, then, there wasn't any alienation uh, as far as you and your mother or you and your father, as in this movie, the, the boy is uh, apparently has been somewhat alienated from his father all those years. There's no doubt that in David Basner's case, he, he did not like his parents, and, and it was not a pleasant house to grow up in, and he was not close with his parents. He didn't even like his parents, which is not the case with me. Uh, David, at the end of this film, realized, okay, it's not the best of pasts. It wasn't the greatest of families, and, and they're not the perfect parents, but it is his past, it is his family, and they are his parents. And there's a connection with, uh, with, with them that directly relates to who he is now. And I think that, that's the, uh, I guess, if any sort of um, understanding is made in the movie, is what he comes to. That there's, there's a blood connection that is undeniable, and that it's nobody's fault, really, particularly here. Everybody just did what they had to do. Which is why this is not, this is not a, you know, we have an image of the, of the American family being father knows best or, or bonanza or something like that. And it's, it's not always the case. This, in some cases, is a tragedy. But in other cases, it's not a tragedy. It's just the facts. You have another film that will be coming out, don't you, that you shot abroad? I shot a film in Israel. I don't know what the name of it is. <laughs> I don't know when it's coming out. We still have a lot of post-production work to do on it. I haven't even seen a frame of it. it, it but it is, it was a departure uh, in, in some ways, because it's a straight romantic drama, uh, period piece, uh, World War II, British-occupied Palestine, Romeo and Juliet thing, uh, directed and written by Moshe Mizrahi, who directed Madame Rosa, for which he also won an Academy Award. It was a it was a fascinating experience in which I was the sole American in the midst of uh, this kind of UN movie making crew in various parts of the Holy Land. It was, really, it was weird. It was fun. It was also hard work. So you're, you have a very diversified career going at the moment. Well, I think I've been very fortunate uh, from the very beginning uh, that the, the, the first job I got and the training I received was in repertory theater, and I've kind of been able to enjoy almost a cinematic version of that ever since. Um, uh, I guess I do work a lot, although I really don't notice it. Um, I guess I'm trying to recreate that, the, the physical aspects of working in repertory theater. Uh, the, what it has worked out for me is that uh, I seem to be able to have had an opportunity to, certainly in comedy, to have done just about anything that, that's come along. I mean, the, the, the movies that I did were pretty varied in their comedic point of view. Uh, and now it would seem that it's beginning to spill over just a bit in, in movies that aren't quite on the surface uh, 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 comedies, but are, I guess, were, are quote unquote serious films, which is fine, but uh, I've always taken everything I've done quite seriously, so it's not that much difference for, in my own head. But I, I, yes, I do. I, yeah, I've been very lucky. The amount of work and the nature of it has been very varied. Well, Tom, it's good to talk with you again. Well, thank you. And enjoyed your performance very much. Thank you know, you. I said, I don't, I'm sure I'm not the only person who ever said this, but the first time I ever met you, I said, you're a guy who's going to have a career not unlike Jack Lemmon's. You'll be able to do all the comedy, and you'll also, you know, tie into a couple of serious roles that'll make that's, your career. That's very high praise. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I really did see that quality in you from the I beginning. I remember you saying that, as a matter of fact. But other people have said that, surely. Well, that is extremely yeah. high praise. That's a uh, but I, I really felt that, that you were a young lemon, and as you matured. I am but a you're young coming, lemon. But <laughs> you're coming along faster than Jack did. I mean. Well, you know, it's funny, though. Uh, uh, the, and I have come along fast because they don't make movies like this. They, back then, they would be making 100 movies at a time, and now we make about 100 movies a year. Yeah. So it's. it's the, the so you have to move faster, is yeah, what I you're do. saying. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I think it's important to, to keep moving. What working. is your age? I'm 30. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you look younger. Oh, bless you. No, you do. You well, really I feel 24. <laughs> but, uh, or I'm 34. I can't do uh, anything. Linda, you're getting, a two sh you're getting two shots, and then we'll let him go, and I'll do the reverses. Okay. Oh, how nice. Thank you. Yeah. Because I'm used to talking to doorknobs and light stands. <laughs> <laughs> doorknobs and lights. I can just see your face there. I don't know. It doesn't have to be there. Yes, this doorknob of a nose. <laughs> <laughs> you, I do remember that in, uh, uh, long ago. It was in the it was during Hotel Splash. For Splash, yes. Yeah. yeah. But I, I just saw that in your performance and in you. There was just something. Of course, I just loved Lemon's work always. Oh. I just think he's... If you, and if you want to look at, a, at a, just an incredible career that yeah. Lemon's had, yeah. and what's nice is that he was doing those types of roles in the midst of doing very yeah. innocuous comedies. I mean, you know, between yeah. 
Who's and he's such a neat guy. The landlord Just at the same time guy. as as, uh, as Days of Wine and Roses, which is at the same time as the apartment yeah. and the uh, fortune cookie. And get all that. back the way oh, you were. It won't match. Yeah. Like okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm also the producer, the director. Oh, okay. <laughs> the whole Boy, oh, what a Renaissance <laughs> woman you are. Holy cow. <laughs> I make that kind of money too. It's real Renaissance pay. <laughs> Renaissance pay, it's yes. like like three pounds, three pounds and six a week. Or something. Right, right. Uh, but that's wild that the uh, film you made in Israel, you know, is uh, you don't know what the name of it is. No, it, well, see, the problem is it. it, it it's like they were trying to capture an American point of view uh, from a non-American point of view. Uh -huh. So I kind of went over this at. Uh, Look. <laughs> Are you sorry you did it? Or? Oh, no, not yeah. at all, not at yeah. all. Uh -uh, and I'm really anxious to see it. Yeah. Uh, but no other names that we would know? No, not a one. It'll probably, well, will it get It'll probably get over release? here and plant some art houses yeah. and things like that. Yeah. That's probably the extent of it. Yeah. You don't seem to be worried about uh, the financial success of films. I mean, you seem to go for the role and, and you're willing to take yeah. your chances. Yeah, <clears throat> it's a crapshoot, that stuff. Yeah. There's no way you can tell. There's no way to... You can spend millions of dollars on publicizing a film and it'll do nothing for it, or you can spend nothing and it'll yeah. go absolutely right through the roof. It's, yeah. There's no way to say it. No, no written rules, which is nice. Keeps things unpredictable. But like on Money Pit, I... Okay. I'm ready whenever you are. Yes, I'll be talking at about this level, doing reverse questions with Tom Hanks in absentia. Tom, do you worry that audiences won't like a more serious Tom Hanks? What's going on here? Uh, Were you at all intimidated working with Jackie Gleason? Offset, would you and Jackie Gleason pal around? What about this picture you made in Israel? The Money Pit got quite a few bad reviews, I guess you could say, but it certainly did well at the box office. Now, what does that tell you? Now, just reactions. Ha, 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 ha. 